welcome to the new lecture on wireless and mobile communication. I am Professor Buradi Tibaricharya of VIT University. In the last lecture, we had discussed on the different types of algorithms uh, present for an handoff mechanism to happen. In that, we had discussed that earlier two two major major uh, solutions were provided. One was that when the mobile is itself searching for a particular uh, base station having a very good signal strength and it tries to hand off on its own and that was called as a mobile control handoff. But the major problem with mobile control handoff which was discussed is that in this case the base station doesn't have a clue or doesn't have any role to play in making the handoff possible. So what will happen eventually that be because the base station doesn't know about the user or the authenticity of the user that naturally will initiate the call drop. So that is the basic problem. But in that case, the network seems to be happy, pretty, pretty, pretty sitting pretty okay, without even assisting in anything related to handoff. Which is actually the problem even for the second case, which was a network assisted handoff, in which we, we we consider that the mobile doesn't have a role to play. Let us have the network to get involved in the handoff. But whenever the network is getting uh, access to the uh, handoff process. What we are looking at is that the network throughout is controlling the, base, uh, the, the, the user who requires a handoff. So in that way, the network selects a new base station for handoff and informs both the mobile and the new base station about the handoff to take place. But the problem is, in this case, when we are looking at it, the network gets too busy. Okay, so the last point is the network will be too busy all throughout the handoff process. So eventually it is already making too many tasks okay so now handoff also if it is given to the network has to do it so the network becomes very busy so we, we made a compromise of both these two while having a mobile assisted handoff in which the mobile itself helps the base station to know that which particular base station it needs to get handoff and that information again on the other hand is shared by the base station itself. So the base station or the network will provide a list of possible nearby base stations which can give you the access based on which the mobile station again gives the information to the existing base station that this is the particular target base station where I want to make a handoff. So the base station, the new base station and the old one will get connection or will connect itself and the base and the handoff will take place. So that is basically the of process. So this ends the algorithms more, more or less. So today's discussion we are going to have something called as the umbrella cell concept which is again uh, in relation to um, handoff. So what happens is that in practice all of the handoff strategies may not be at all needed as the user might not need one. Okay. So that is either the mobile station remains within the vicinity of a particular base station or it doesn't have the duration of the call to last so long that it requires a handoff. So whatever be the scenario. But however, the other alternative is also very high possibility and that is the mobile station is using a car or a very high speed vehicle and moving in a very rapid way. Okay. So that requires an intracellular handoff in that way. Okay. So it's a frequent and it's very fast. So what happens is there is naturally a dynamic strategy is to be considered okay so that is what we call as the umbrella cell concept in that we can observe from this diagram quite clearly this is a diagram which is taken from the report itself in that you can observe that this is a this this, this small cell is accompanied by some small base stations here okay so basically you can see here it's mentioned small micro cells for low speed traffic so those users who are moving at a much smaller or a much lesser speed they are given a chance to roam around within this particular base station because it is considered that you, you will be still under the coverage of a particular base station so you don't require an handoff but if you are moving in a very fast moving car something like this if the scenario if you are considering why the earlier scenario won't be happening suppose i have a suppose i have a car somewhere here okay we have a car somewhere here and by the time it gives the connection to this particular base station 1, 
it has come very fast and it has come somewhere here. So the same car is now located somewhere here. So what is happening by the time this base station will give an handoff request to this neighboring maybe this will again eventually be sending it to this and finally some connection might come to this. The user has already come over this place. So that is the reason why if that is the case what is happening we, we are giving an alternative solution that for the large umbrella cell for the high speed traffic we will mount a very tall tower okay. so using different antenna heights so basically if we consider here one is different antenna heights okay. so this is a very very important concept that uh, it might, it may be in the same building, but we can have different power levels for two different antennas. Naturally, you can, from the visual, it, is, it implies that the, uh, the large um, umbrella or the large base station which is placed, it will be a more powerful one. So, naturally, what will happen? The coverage region will be more. So, even if the car is moving from a position A to B, suppose, okay, but it is still under the coverage of this bigger base station. So, it does not require an antenna. So for the large high speed traffic, we are actually providing a scenario where the handoff is not taking place. Okay. And the pedestrian traffic is handled by the small cell. So this is the basic concept behind the very unique solution in terms of the umbrella cell. Okay. The other uh, thing that might happen, sometimes it, it is also very unique and a very uh, uh, common thing that usually happens which is called as a cell dragging. Okay. Now, cell dragging results from a pedestrian user that provides a very strong signal to the base station. How it is possible? So, basically, we are looking at the, the, the point of attention is the pedestrian user. So, we are not looking at a very high speed moving user. Okay. So, in this case, what is happening that in urban areas, when there is a line of sight, this is what the main point is the line of sight. So, if there is exists a line of sight radio path between the subscriber and the base station, when the user travels away, even if it goes away from the base station, what will happen since there is no there is a line of sight, there is no difference or there is very slow or very less change in the power that is being supplied to the user. So what will happen on an average, the average signal strength doesn't decay rapidly. So even if the user has moved from one cell coverage to another one, even there, the earlier base station, the home base station is still serving as the new base station. So even when the user has traveled well beyond the design and range of the cell, the received signal at the station is above a handoff threshold. So it doesn't require a handoff actually. But what will happen that it creates a potential interference with the next base station. Because when it is reaching to the next cell, it is expected that the cellular coverage, the base station that is covering that particular new cell that is what we are looking at suppose this is one cell and this is another one ok so now this is one base station main mounted and this is one base station so this is suppose base station 1 and this is base station 2 so the user when it is roaming from this place to this place it's supposed to be that B2 will give the handoff B2 is sure supposed to give the handoff to the end user but in this case what is happening the user although has reached this position it is still under the influence of B1. So hence a confusion is created. Okay. That is what we call as cell uh, dragging uh, problem. And so it is a very peculiar uh, kind of thing uh, that will happen and it is all, all it is sometimes called as the cell is being dragged. Okay. So that is one of the uh, key criteria. So it may be like adjusting the handoff threshold, okay. it can be solved, adjusting the handoff threshold or the radio coverage parameters can be uh, carefully set in that way so that the handoff is taking place for even the line of sight users. So that is what the cell dragging is. Now when will the handoff take place, when, when, shall, uh, when, when do we actually have a handoff? We usually know that when there is a signal stream that come, that drops below a certain threshold then, it, then the handoff will take place. Riding it is the time up to which it will stay or uh, it will detect the, the network will try to search that whether there is a chance of a handoff to take place because it might happen that there is a temporary loss of the signal strength okay? but that doesn't actually mean that there is supposed to be a handoff. 
so the time over which a call is maintained within a cell without an end of is called as a dwell time it is a very important and a very interesting definition because in most of the cases the dwell time is not the time for which the call is being made that is not dwell time that is maybe you can call that as a set of time okay or the call duration but this is what we are looking at when there is the time the maximum duration of up to which the network will remain as it is and we expect that the call will be continued without even having an end now the dwell time of particular user is governed by number of factors like the propagation actually in the interferences the distance between the subscribers anything can might change and that will result in a temporary decay in the signal for stationary mobile users motion in the vicinity of the base station mobile produces fading and even a stationary subscriber have a finite energy of time so this time when the this time determine when should be the hang up and there can be cases where there due to momentary fading the signals may drop whereas base station monitors within the dwell time so ideally the setting the dwell time is set in a manner that the maximum after within that dwell time the base station will be allowed to make the hand of that so this is what the dwell time is all about it's a very interesting concept in hand of scenarios and the last of the discussion for today is uh, what we call as the guard channel concept this was old actually this is old uh, making sure there is a prioritizing of a hand of so the guard channel concept is that there is a fraction of a total available channels that may be kept exclusively for hand of So whenever we require a handoff, we will look forward to those channels, and it will be allotted to the areas who are requiring a handoff. But the ma- naturally, this is a, this is not a very uh, spectrally efficient solution because you never know because you never know that whether handoff will at all be needed. But you have already reserved the channel, so it could have been given to end users. Another other than that, you have reserved it for a handoff to take place. So this is not a very spectrally efficient system. And the other one is the queuing of a handoff, which is why like if the channels are all Busy, so handoff request will wait okay, until a free channel is allotted. So it increases the probability of a forced call termination because it will wait. It will make sure that the user is waited for a finite duration of time. And after that, the queue size naturally is determined on the basis of traffic load. If the traffic load is too heavy, the handoff, this queuing of handoff will be more. So user is waited for a particular period of time, and after that, the channel will be empty at some point. And based on the Position of your call, you will be given the priority. So that is how the uh, queuing of handoff usually takes place. So this is all about w- what we have to know or at least have to learn about the handoff technique. So we'll come back with the next video on the interferences on uh, cellular targets. Uh, when we discuss on the that what what happens with an inter um, uh, when we have we have already discussed the. Uh, frequency rule. So what what actually happens with the uh, in- interference and the system capacity of the system?